Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Galton Families dataset. You can find um, this particular data set. There's a package called hist data in R. It has a bunch of interesting historical data sets uh, from the history of science. Um, one of them uh, is called the Galton Families data set. So to remind you to read in a particular data set from a particular package, you can use the data function and you specify the name of the data set and the package as well. So if I run that, uh, there should be a object called Galton Families. There it is. And just to make my life easier with typing, I'm going to assign that to the variable dat. And let's just look at the first 30 rows of that data set. So you can see how this is organized. It's organized by family. And so the first four rows of this data set correspond to family labeled 001. And they give you the father's height for that family, the mother's height for that family, something called the mid-parent height, which I'll show you what that is in just a second, uh, the number of children in the family, uh, the child num, and I'll say a little bit more about that later, and the gender of the child, either male or female, and then the height of the child at full maturity. So you can see uh, the first family has four rows and so the number of children and the first family is four the father's height is repeated four times and the mother's height is repeated four times and the children if you look at the documentation for the data the children are not numbered in the order of birth they're numbered in first the males then the females but the within the gender, their order within the order of birth. So this one corresponds to the oldest male. This is the oldest female, second oldest female, and third almost oldest female. But we have no way from this data set of knowing whether where this male fits uh, within uh, the three females in terms of order of birth. Okay. And one other thing to mention is that it's clear that the heights are in inches. So the first family is pretty tall. 78.5 inches would be, uh, well, let's see, 78.5 would be six and a half feet tall. So that's pretty tall. Let's double check that. Let's look at the hist of dat dollar father. Okay, so that just happened to be a very tall father. The average is somewhere maybe around 69, which would be five feet nine inches. Um, and let's also look at the mother. Uh, average seems to be somewhere around 64, which is 5 feet 4 inches, which sounds about right. Okay. Um, so that's what the data is. And uh, first thing I like to do when analyzing any data set is to make some plots. So uh, I'm just going to do a few simple things. So I'm going to pl plot the child heights as a function of the father's and mother's heights, and also of this mid-parent height, uh, which is still mysterious at the moment, but I'll show you what that is in just a second. Uh, so we run this, uh, we get this. So it looks like, I don't know, this may be hard to tell. Potentially the father's height is more informative about child height than mother's height. There seems to be some cases where there's a very short mother that has reasonably sized children. Uh, of course, we're not taking the sex or gender of the child into account here. And then it looks like potentially this mid-parent height variable 
um, is even better than using either of the individual parent sites. So the idea for this data set, um, we want to be able to have a model for predicting children's heights from uh, the heights of their parents. Okay, so let's investigate um, this mid-parent height thing. So if it turns out, if you look in the documentation, uh, it'll tell you exactly what mid-parent height is. It's um, 0 0.5 times the father's height plus 0 0.54 times the mother's height. Uh, but I think it's a little bit more fun to see if we can recover that relationship by doing a regression. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to regress mid-parent height on the father and mother variables, and I'm going to print out a summary for that. Okay, so what do we get? Uh, this is all the usual stuff, and we see that the intercept is zero, the father coefficient is 0 0.5, and the mother coefficient is 0 0.54. The standard errors are zero, basically. And then there's, and the residual standard error is zero, basically, as well. So what this means is that you can perfectly predict mid-parent height uh, by taking 0 0.5 times the father's height and adding to that 0 0.54 times the mother's height. So that tells you something about how uh, this mid-parent height thing is created. And then there's a warning at the bottom here uh, says that this is essentially a perfect fit. Summary may be unreliable. So this is a, another indicator that uh, mid-parent height is exactly equal to 0.5 times father plus 0.54 times mother. Uh, so this is kind of cool. We can recover that relationship by just doing a regression. Okay, so let's now move on to some simple models for... Um, child height as a function of uh, mother and father. Um, of course, the gender of the child is going to be important in the model, so that's going to be in every one of the models we look at. Uh, the first one here just has mother as a predictor. The second one just has father. The third one has this mid-parent height variable, which is a linear combination of father and mother. And then the fourth one also is a linear combination of father and mother, but we allow the model to estimate that linear combination directly. So let's run those models and look at the results. So the first one is the mother model. Uh, so some things to look out for are the coefficient on mother uh, the coefficient on gender male. For most of these models, this is going to come out to about 5.2. So what that says is, on average, all other things being held constant, a male child is going to be about 5.2 inches taller than a female, which sounds about right. And then we'll take a look at the residual standard error, which is 2.372. So given this information, we should be able to predict the child's height within about 2.372 inches. Okay, so here's M2. This is the father model. So the first thing that kind of jumps out is that the residual standard error goes down a little bit. Uh, so it does look like the father model is slightly better uh, than the mother model. Of course, we'd want to do a formal statistical test to see if there is a significant difference here, but it looks to be a little bit different. At least that agrees with the, the plot that we saw. And then here is mid-parent height. So if instead of using mother or father, we use a specific linear combination of mother and father, namely this mid-parent height, we do even better still. We get a residual standard error of about 2.17. And then lastly, if we allow the model to select the particular linear combination of father and mother, mother we get uh, even slightly better, so 2.165. Um, so we can do a F test to compare these various models. So of course we can compare model 1 to model 4 because um, model 1 is directly a special case of model 4, namely we set the father coefficient to 0. And then the same thing for model 2, uh, it's model 4, except we set the mother coefficient to 0. 
And then model three, we can also compare to model four with an ANOVA or an F-test because um, here we're saying that we don't know the specific linear combination of father and mother. And here we say it's some multiple of 0 0.5 times father plus 0 0.54 times mother. So we can do F tests for the comparison. Of course, the father and mother models are highly significant. Um, and it does seem like we have some evidence that the specific linear combination chosen uh, in the data set mid-parent height is not as good as allowing us uh, allowing ourselves to estimate that linear combination directly. The p-value is about 0 0.02. But it's not a whole lot better, so this isn't really super strong evidence. Okay, so one thing these models don't take into account is the inherent correlation between uh, children from the same family. So why might that be true? So one, one reason why um, the heights of children within a family are correlated is because they share uh, the genetics of their father and mother. And so in these first models where we do just a regular old linear model fit, we are accounting for those somewhat for those genetic effects However, we're not accounting for other types of effects that, that might be um, unique to each family. For example, um, there are environmental factors according, um, that differ among the families. There may be socioeconomic differences among the families as well. Um, so, for example, uh, children who are better fed at an early age may uh, grow up to be taller, and those things will be... Um, shared within a family but may differ across families. So we're going to use the LMER package and we're going to use the LMER function. So we're going to use the same thing as model 4 except we're going to add a random effect for family. So that's M5. And if we look at summary of M5 we get the following over here. Um, so this tells us how we fit the model. We have some residuals. And then here are the estimates of the random effects. So we get the variance of the family effect is about 0 0.9073. And the residual variance is about 3.8197. If we take the square root of each of those, we get 0 0.95 and 1.95. So one thing um, is, well, how do these numbers compare to the uh, standard error of the residual we got in the previous models. Remember the best the best model was about 2.165. That was model four. Actually we can just print it out. Summary M4. We got 2.165. So to get um, to get a standard error uh, for a residual, there's a couple of ways we can think about it. So if you think about, so say we have a, a father and mother starting a new family, and we want to know what's the standard, what is the variance of the residual for their first child? Well, that should just be, we add the, we don't know what their family random effect is yet. And then, of course, there's the uncorrelated random effect. So we would have to add up both the um, variance of the family effect and the residual variance and take the square root. So this tells us that the um, the residual for that first child will have a variance about two or square, standard deviation about 2.17 which is actually very close to what we got for this model. However once uh, that family bears a child if the child is taller than expected according to the fixed effects, then we expect the second child to be taller as well. Um, and you can use that information about the first child to help make a slightly better prediction about the second child. So this, the standard deviation of the residual for the second child, given knowledge of the first child, uh, is going to be slightly smaller. And what the meaning of these parameters are is if, if so this standard deviation of the first child is about 
But if we had a family with theoretically infinitely many children, uh, the standard deviation of the n plus 1 child, given knowledge of the nth child, for n is very large, would be about 1.95, which is smaller than the 2.165 in the original model. So that just means that if you have a family that's bearing taller children than expected, you can expect the next child to be taller and uh, improve your prediction a little bit. Okay, now let's look at the rest of the model. Here are the effects. Uh, intercept gender male again is about 5.2, and then this is the linear combination of father and mother, which is pretty close to uh, what we got for M4. All right, so if we look at the data again, there's some other infer interesting information in the data set, namely the number of children in the family and this child num variable. So one thing we might wonder about is if you know ahead of time that they're going to have four children or six children, does that help you predict um, the height of the children in the family? And perhaps there are differences in the heights of the first child versus the second and third child and so on. So our first model we're going to fit, um, we're just gonna add children to that model We can see that these standard deviations don't change very much. So this doesn't help us a lot in the prediction. And you can see that the coefficient on the children variable is about minus 0.04 um, with a t-statistic of minus 1.132. So what this means is that uh, given father height, mother height, and gender of the child, the size of the family has a negative impact on the height of the children in that family. And the impact is minus 0.04 per child. So if a family has four children, it'd be about 0 0.16, minus 0 0.16. Okay. Now another thing to think about is maybe there are effects of uh, the first child is taller than the last child, or vice versa. Um, so to do that, we actually have to create a new variable. So recall that um, here in this data set, they list, they always list the male children first in this child num variable. So we don't know and we can't recover from this data set the actual ordering of the children, but we can calculate the ordering of the children within the gender. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a family variable, which are the unique values of the uh, family variable within the data set. So there are 204 of them. And I'm going to define gender num to be child num to initialize it. And then what I have to do is I have to loop over the families, figure out what's the child num of the first female and then adjust all the female child nums. So let's just do this for j equals one so you can see how this works. So the first female in the first family is child number two. So we have to take those child numbers subtract two and add one. And then let me just run the whole loop. Okay. And we'll print that out as well. Okay. So what we've done here is we created gender num where this first female in the first family gets a one instead of a two, second one gets a two, and the third one gets a three. And then we're gonna do a regression where we include both children and gender num, so this is the order within gender of each child. And look at the summary. 
Okay, so this is kind of interesting. So what we find is that um, the children coefficient becomes positive instead of negative and significant. This gender num coefficient is negative and it's very highly significant. And then everything else is about the same. So the effect of male is 5.2, father's about 0.38, and mother's about 0 0.30. So let's try to unpack this and see what it means. Uh, we also change um, these variables. So we find that um, the vari variance of the family effect is a little bit larger and the variance of the residual is a little bit smaller. So this is some clue that this might be a better model at predicting um, the children's height. And so let's look at these things. So what does this mean? So given um, knowledge of the father's height, the mother's height, the sex of the child, and the total number of children in the family, the ith child will be about zero i times 0 0.854 inches shorter uh, than the i minus one child. So each successive child within a family of a fixed size is about 0.854 inches smaller. That seems almost too large to be uh, true, uh, but that's what the that's what the estimate is. Okay, so that wraps up um, our analysis of the Galton families data, and so you could use this to, for example, predict the heights of children in a family.